Hi, I'm Stephanie, a desk clerk at the Anna District Library, and I'm here today to talk to you about board games. In specific, we're going to be talking about dexterity games. Uh, dexterity games are games where you are manipulating pieces with your hands in a dexterous fashion. That could be stacking pieces, um, you could be flicking things, um, flicking cards, you could be moving things delicately from one container to another. Um, sometimes you have to, it involves speed, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just going to go over a few dexterity games that I have in my collection, and um, hopefully you see something that you like and something that um, you might want to play. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is Animal Upon Animal. And I have the box right here. This is by Hava Games. It's for ages four and up for two to four players. Um, they do make different versions of this game. There's even one with uh, that's for younger players um, that's got bigger pieces um, for those little small hands. Um, so in this game, there's a crocodile, and that is our base for all of the animals. So we're going to be building a tower on top of these. this crocodile. Every player gets a set, an equal set of animals. I think that's about right. Um, so there's just a snake, there's, I think this is a hedgehog, a monkey, um, sheep, bird, I don't know, toucan maybe, <laughs> and a penguin. Um, so the goal is to get rid of all of your animals first by stacking them on top of this crocodile. Um, to do that, on your turn you roll the die. And depending on what it says, that's how many animals or what action you do. So if it rolls a one, you're going to stack one animal on top of this crocodile. Um, and then you, your turn would be over, you'd pass the die to the next player. Um, and throughout the game, people will be stacking up on top of or next to this crocodile. And hopefully... The tower doesn't fall over on you. Because if the tower falls over, then you keep two of those animals you get to pick. They go back to your pool. The rest of them just go back to the box so the game doesn't go on literally forever. Um, but the goal of the game is to have all of your animals stacked up first. So having it fall over on your turn defeats that, that purpose. Um, but I think it's super fun. It's just a blast to stack up wooden animals. Um, so that is Animal Fun Animal. Pack that up. The next one is also by Hobby Games, called Rhino Hero, and that's the one that you see stacked up right here. Um, so Rhino Hero is um, for ages five and up, two to five players. In this game, you get, grab my components here, some, every player gets uh, five roof tiles, unless you're playing in a two-player game, in which case each player gets seven roof tiles, and the goal of this game is to get rid of all of your roof tiles before anybody else does, or before the tower collapses. Um, or you don't, yeah, if the tower collapses on your turn, you don't win. But you still had fun, so really you won, right? Um, so I don't know if you can see, but on these roof tiles there's some uh, lines, and they look a little, I don't know if you can see that from there, but this one they're kind of L-shaped. On this one they're you know, diagonal arrows in the center. Um, so you start with this one on the ground. On your turn, you take these cards that you've bent in place, or bent in half, and place them carefully on the lines, and then you get to place one of your roof tiles on top of it. Um, and like I said, you start with five of them, you want to get rid of all of them. Um, some of the roof tiles do have special actions in the corner, like this one, you can't really see it. It says plus one. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, it means you get to play an extra one. Um, this one has a little picture of a rhino hero on top of it. And that means... 
Oh, where'd my Rhino Hero go? I lost the Rhino Hero! Uh, well, I can't find him, but he's a little dude. And that just means that you put the Rhino Hero on top of that as it gets taller and taller. Moving Rhino Hero up the floors gets riskier and riskier for the tower to not collapse. Um, so the next person, their turn, now they have to lay their building pieces on top of the roof that you laid down, and then they get to lay their roof down, hopefully not collapsing it. Um, so that is Rhino Hero, and at the end of this, I'm going to show you how to make your own Rhino Hero card game at home if you can't. Get out to the store and get your own copy right away. All right. So the next dexterity game I wanted to talk about is Fast Track. This is Fast Track Mini. Uh, it's just a smaller version of the regular Fast Track. Um, there's also different versions. I think there's an NHL version. It's the same game. It just looks a little bit differently. This is by Blue Orange Games. Um, it's only a two-player game, but it goes so fast. If you have a crowd that wants to play, you can just play rounds and maybe set up a tournament. It'd be kind of fun. Um, so I'm going to try and show you the board a little bit. So you can see that there's these elastic bands here separating. There's, you know, two sides, one for each player, and then there's a hole in the middle of this divider. And then each player starts with four of these little tiny wooden discs on their side. And I'm going to have this mysterious arm play me in this game. Um, so the goal is to get all of your, all of the pieces on one side. And if you can get all the pieces on your opponent's side before they get the pieces on your side, you win. Oh, almost and bounce right back. There we go. <laughs> so that is fast track. Or fast Track Mini. Um, it's super fun. It's super fast. We just played an entire game right there. Um, and it's just loads of fun to bounce those discs back and forth. So another uh, dexterity game that I wanted to talk about is Dr. Eureka. I think this is actually one of my favorite um, dexterity games that is out there. This is also by Blue Orange Games. Um, it's for ages eight and up, one to four players, so you can play it by yourself as sort of just a puzzle against yourself if you wanted to. Um, so this game comes with some pretty unique pieces, which I love. It has these test tubes, which have these colored marbles in them. Um, so there's purple, green, and I don't know, like a coral orangey color. Um, maybe red looks more coral to me. Um, doesn't matter. So anyways, these in the game represent chemicals, so you can't touch the balls, these marbles, in the test tubes the entire game. So you're going to be pouring these back and forth to complete a puzzle before the other players. Um, so you have a deck of cards, and you'll flip up a card. It'll show you how you need to arrange the marbles in your test tubes before the other players can arrange the marbles in their test tubes. Whoever finishes first yells Eureka naturally and wins the round. Then they get the the card as a point. Um, you can play to however many points you want to, really. I think in the rule book it says play to five points wins. I could be wrong on that, but just play till you want to stop. And then whoever has the most cards wins. Or you don't really need a winner, you can just be playing for fun. Um, so mysterious hands are gonna join me again and we're gonna play around, show you how it's done. Alright, so Eureka! Ah! Okay, well, I should stop. <laughs> Alright, so Mysterious Hands have won the round, so they would get the point, and then if we were to continue playing, we would just flip up another another card out of this deck and go again. You don't reset the test tubes 
in between rounds, you just keep going from where you last left off. So each person, as you go throughout the game, um, their starting test tubes are going to look a little bit differently. Um, what happens if I spill my test tubes? Uh, if you spill your test tubes, you're out of the round! Unless you're playing with really young players, in which case, just let them pick them back up and keep going. Um, I find that with really young players, it's sometimes nicer to just let them keep playing and have fun, rather than saying, Okay, you're out! You can't play the round anymore! Um, but in reality, the rules do say that you're out of the round if you spill them. So the next game that I want to talk about is called Fuse. This is a dexterity game that leans more into the speed rather than um, fine motor manipulation um, aspect of dexterity games. So this is called Fuse. It's by Renegade Games, uh, designed by Kel Klenko. Um, this is for ages 13 and up, 1 to 5 players. So this is more of a uh, grown-up um, dexterity game than some of the other ones that I was showing you. So this one is also a cooperative game. So you're not competing against the other player. You are working together to um, achieve a goal. And that goal is to get through a certain number of cards, which um, show you tasks that you have to do, in a set amount of time. So it's 10 minutes. Um, and in this game, you use a timer that you can just set on your phone um, for 10 minutes, and then when the timer goes up, that's it, game over. If you haven't accomplished enough tasks by that point, um, you've lost. But if you have, you won. Um, so the task cards um, show different things that you're going to be doing with dice. So, for example, this one here um, says number plus number plus number equals 11. So we're going to be rolling dice and then frantically grabbing the dice and negotiating with our other players. Uh, about which dice to get, and the person who has this wants all three of their dice to match up equal to 11. Um, this one, um, you can see that each of the blocks here have two colors on them, so the dice are colored, and you just want to have, in this one here, a green or a blue, in the middle one a red or yellow, and the last one I believe that's a red or a blue. Um, so if this were the game set up like this, and then you typically have I think, some amount, I don't remember how many, sorry, um, in the center. In a two-player game, uh, you roll four dice. In a, um, a more player game, you roll dice equal the number of players. One person grabs the bag, grabs out, so I feel alone, four dice, rolls them. We would have a timer set, and then we would have this very frantic conversation about Okay, I can use a red on either of these. Um, I can't start this because I need two blacks, two black dice on that. Um, so it looks like you could use a yellow. Do you care which number you get? You might want a six since you're adding up to 11. And then I can put those red dice there. And then pass the bag. And the next person would draw out, again, four dice. Roll them. Okay, I can use the blue or the green. Um, Looks like you can use the green there, um, so maybe I'll take the blue. And that completes this uh, card here. I would just pick up those dice, put them back in. That is one task completed. And then I would draw a task from the center here, and we would just keep going, assuming that we had, you know, finished allocating those dice. Um, and then this leads us to an interesting spot because... Um, my opponent here, or my, not opponent, my fellow player cannot use this die. I can't use this die either. Um, so what that means is we um, will have to discard some dice off of our boards. So I roll it, and it shows me a number, which happened to be one. And then each player uh, would have to, from their unfinished board, so the one I finished already, it is still finished, it doesn't lose anything. But from the unfinished boards, we'll have to discard either a one a die that has the number one on it or a die that is red. So my co-player here has to discard the red die that was on his card. It goes back in the bag along with this one. So you, you do suffer a penalty for not being able to allocate those dice properly. Like I said, you only have 10 minutes, so these turns are very, very fast, very frantic, um, very fast negotiation. So that's Fuse. The 
next game I wanted to talk to you about is called Riff Raff. This is by Zoc Games, um, designer Christoph Kanzler. Um, so this game is really, it uses a unique, um, uses the box in a unique way and has some really interesting components. Um, so this is Riff Raff. Um, and let me just show you this game. So this is Riff Raff. Um, like I said, it uses the box in a really unique way. So this is actually the bottom of the box here. Um, so when you take this out, and you open up the box, everything is stored in this, in this hollow space here. And then you assemble it inside of the board by putting these cardboard pieces in play, place. Let's see if I can do it. And then it has a wooden ring and this lovely boat, um, which is on a metal ball, which acts as a pendulum when you put it in place. I think I lost a bit here. So then you've got the mast of your ship and so it goes back and forth. Um, Similar to other dexterity games, this one you have a set of pieces. Um, I think there's a few more pieces. You get a set of pieces and you're trying to get rid of your pieces before uh, the other players can get rid of their pieces. Um, and that is accomplished by putting them on this boat. So every player gets a set of cards. They're just cards with numbers on them. Um, I think it goes 1 to 10, um, which implies to me that I've put this together wrong, but that's okay. Um, so on your turn, um, or sorry, not on your turn, uh, at the start of every round, each player picks a card secretly, and that indicates where on the boat they are going to place their piece. I don't know if you can see, each of these has numbers on them, so these spaces. So then everyone reveals simultaneously the card, and then the person with the highest number uh, goes first. They're called the captain. Um, and that means that, that the number they chose is where they have to place a piece on the boat, um, but they do get to choose at that moment which piece they're going to put. And since you're trying to get rid of all of your pieces, um, it's just very strategic about where you're going to place these so it doesn't tip over. Um, you can do it anywhere on that location. Um, and of course you'd be going and then the next player would be going. And if it tips, you want to try and catch the pieces. Uh, because any ones you don't catch, even if they weren't ones that you put on initially, any pieces you don't catch, they come back to your pile. And um, since the goal is to get rid of all of your pieces, now you have a lot more pieces to get rid of. So this is a very wobbly boat. It's on a turbulent sea. Um, so I just wanted to show that one because I really love the way that it implement it uses the box. Um, it's got this really cool pendulum. It's just a really neat component-wise game. This next one is called Cup a Cup. Uh, it's by r, r Games for ages six and up, three to eight players. Um, so this one is pretty fun because it uses some things that you might just have at home, like cups. If you've got some plastic cups lying around and a Sharpie, um, all you'd need after that is a couple of dice. So it has these cups with wacky smiley faces on them. And most importantly, the faces don't actually have anything to do gameplay. Um, but most importantly is the symbols and colors on the top of the cups. So whoop. you set the cups out in a random order in easy reach of all players. Um, and then one person rolls the dice and these dice have the same you know, colors and shapes that the, the cups do. Um, so when the dice are rolled, 
if it is, this is a speed game, so if it is the same color and shape, so for this example, two blue circles, um, if that is what is rolled, then everyone is supposed to, so these are, need to be in easy view of all players as well, and then it's a race to see who can find that exact cup. And whoever gets it first, and you should just be placing your hand right on top of it, um, otherwise you risk kind of damaging the cups. Um, they're just plastic cups. Um, so that is a point, and then you go for, um, I think, four points, four cups. Um, the, the fun part is, if this is here and we had rolled two blue circles again, everyone's now going to be trying to steal my point um, back from me. So if the symbols, if it was two triangles, but they're different colors, you're going to be trying to find the cup that is missing. So this is a red triangle and a yellow triangle, so everyone's going to be going for the blue triangle. That's the one that's not listed here. Um, if it is the, if it is the same color, but different shapes, so for example, the you know, blue square and the blue circle, um, then again, we're going to be trying to find the one that's missing. So the blue s color that's not listed here would be the blue triangle. Um, and then if they are different colors and different shapes, so for example, the red triangle and the yellow square, um, then you're going to be trying to find the blue circle. So that's the one that's not, not shown on the dice. So unless they match exactly, if they match exactly, that's the one you're going for. If they don't match exactly, then you're going for the one that's not listed in that set. Sorry, I showed you yellow. That is the hardest one to show up on this screen. But um, so for th this example, you'd be going for the red square. Um, so. Okay, so yellow triangle, yellow square, we need yellow circle. There you go, got it. So that is red square, because we had the red, the yellow square and the blue square. Um, that is yellow circle, so I just tap it and that means I get to keep my points. Uh, yep, blue circle, blue circle, blue circle. <laughs> Uh, what is that? That is blue circle. Yep. Um, okay. And there we go. So you can do it to however many points you want, whatever length of game that you want. Um, so that is Cup of Cup by R&R Games. Guys, I found the, ra found the rhino hero! There he is! All right, so we're gonna make him a tower so you can play Rhino Hero at home before you get a chance to go to the store and pick up your own copy if that's what you choose to do. Um, so all you need are index cards or some playing cards you don't mind destroying. So you can take these index cards and draw the lines on them um, just like they have in the game. Um, so need a few other index cards to fold in half just like so and then put them on the lines just like you do in the game and there's our other roof um but you know you can go crazy with this you don't have to do exactly like they have in the game so you could do um I don't know. You could do. Something at an odd angle. Like that. And see what that looks like. When we put our walls on it. Um, and like I said, you can just use regular playing cards, just fold them in half, make sure that it's okay with uh, 
whoever owns the playing cards. Um, before you go destroying them to make your own game. Um, but, you know, it's fold in half, maybe use something to, to uh, score that edge there. Um, let's see, just using an old set here. I don't care about and was already missing some cards anyways. Um, and the fun part about making this at home yourself is that you can make up what the powers are on the cards. So remember in the um, in Rhino Hero, there are powers on the edges of some of the roof tile cards. Um, so you can add those in yourself um, and just make up what they mean. Um, but don't forget to include ones that have spot for your Rhino Hero to climb this tower. So that is how you make Rhino Hero at home with some index cards or some playing cards that you don't mind folding in half. Well, thanks for joining me and learning about all of these amazing new dexterity games and learning what a dexterity game is and what it can be. Um, you saw that there were some that involved speed, some that involved stacking, games for kids, games for grown-ups, um, ones that are more puzzly, um, some that can make a huge mess in all of their pieces spilling around. There's a wide range in what you can do with games. Maybe you could play around at home designing your own dexterity game with things that you have lying around. Um, well, I hope you had some fun. Um, again, I'm Stephanie from the Ann Arbor District Library, and this was Dexterity Games.